Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Brass Birmingham, which is the sequel to Brass, which is one of the most well-loved, highly regarded Euro-style economic simulations of all time from designer Martin Wallace. And Martin has joined forces with Roxley Game Studios to bring us a sequel, which adds quite a bit of stuff, removes some stuff, and tweaks quite a bit as well. And I'm going to show you how Brass Birmingham works in a two-player run-through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Birmingham, everybody. Birmingham and the surrounding environments. It is the British, the English Industrial Revolution, and we are industrial magnets trying to make our fortune. At the beginning of the game, we start with 17 pounds, which, if you have the deluxe version of the game, are these really, really cool, heavy, solid poker chips. If you have the regular version, they're still very nice-looking cardboard chips. We start with 17 pounds and eight random industry cards drawn from the deck. And also, as part of setup, we have to find out where is their demand for the goods that we might make. Now, on the board, there are five areas that we can ship our manufactured goods. Oxford, uh, Gloucester, Shrewsbury, Warrington, and Nottingham. But since I am playing a two-player game today, Nottingham and Warrington, in fact, the entire north of this board is really not going to get that much love uh, because to tighten things up, we really focus on the south. And as part of setup, we have these little contract tiles that we shuffle up face down and then deploy to all of the major hub cities. And that determines where demand is going to be. In this game, Gloucester is going to be wanting cotton and nothing else. You can see this, they end up with a blank. So they just want cotton. And neighboring Oxford just wants manufactured goods. And Shrewsbury, this game, is going to be where the action is at because they'll take all three types of goods over there. Cotton, manufactured goods, and pottery. So, uh, this is where the action is. Although it could have just as been that, hey, uh, Oxford would uh, take you know everything plus also. And you know it could very well be that Shrewsbury would take nothing. It's part of the randomized setup, which is right off the bat a very, very big change from the original brass. Where there wasn't really demand for anything until players built forts. Players had to build the demand. Here, the demand comes built in and randomized every time you play, which is going to make you focus on different areas. In, uh, over here, the west area is going to be where the action is at because Shrewsbury is where we have to ship our pottery and our manufactured goods. Or certainly our pottery. Our manufactured goods could come all the way down here to Oxford instead. But because of that, I think this is going to be kind of a hotbed of development in this particular game. And since I am the first player, I should probably take advantage of that. I am the yellow player. Here's my little marker to indicate I'm first. Jen, the purple player, is second. By the way, these are two-sided. So you could be one of the few ladies of the industry at the time. Or you could be a dude. And there's actually historical write-ups of who all these characters were. These uh, real historical people. So anyway, so I'm going first, and I've got my eye, but to where I actually get to build is determined in large part by my hand. So let's see what I got. I got Colebrook Dale, which is perfect. It is right next to Shrewsbury. I'm going to be using this to build in Colebrook Dale. And Wolverhampton, uh, Nuneaton, Coventry, Canuck, and three industry cards, breweries and iron industry cards. So, these are the cards that determine what and where I can build. And so, knowing that, let's get going. Now, the way the game normally works is on your turn, you will play two of those cards to do two actions, usually limited to a city or an industry based on what the card is. But, on the very, very first round of the game, each player can only play one card. So I only get to do one action right out of the gate. And what are those actions? Well, they're right here on this nice little aid. This is actually really nice. And at a glance view of what all cards are in the deck for each of the two eras of the game. And you'll note, in a two-player game, none of the northern cards are in the deck, which is why you know, it'll be, we could build in stone or a derby or whatever, but it's going to be tougher to do. We really want to focus more on the south. Anyway, this is really what I'm interested in right now. What are the actions I can do? I can build, I can network, develop, sell, loan, or scout. Alrighty, so 
What do I want to start out? I want to build over here. So I have that Colebrookdale card, which means I could build here and uh, make uh, a, a coal factory or a coal mine or an iron factory or a brewery. I could do any of those three things right off the bat. Although, um, that's if I play my, what was it, my Colbert card. I did have a Colbert, didn't I? Yeah, a Colbert Dale? Yeah, I do. So if I play that, I can build anything here. Now instead, if I play one of my industry cards, well, I can build uh, pretty much anywhere at this point, but only a particular type of industry, iron or brewing or iron. So, what am I going to do? Well, here's an interesting thing. Because Shrewsbury is going to be so hot, it's presumably as the first of the two eras, the canal era of the game is going to evolve, I expect this is where we're going to want to ship most stuff. I would really like to take advantage of that by being the one to dig a canal between Colebrookdale and Shrewsbury because then I will benefit from that canal. And if I can only do one action, I think I'll build a canal. Which, right off the bat, is an interesting thing. In the original brass, you cannot build a canal, or later on, a rail, unless it's extending your existing network. But one of the tweaks, I believe this is a tweak, I don't think you could do that in the original brass, in tweak in Birmingham is, if you don't have any network, you can go right on ahead and uh, build, dig a canal before you start building your industry. And that's what I'm going to do. So... I am going to network right off the bat, which means I can place a link, a canal right now. If we were in the second half of the game, it'd be rail on the board. And to do it, I have to discard a card. And be um, Now, it's only when I try to do a build action that the card I play matters and limits where I can go. Any of these other actions, I can discard anything. The cards are effectively wild cards. Uh, because discarding any card will let me put a link wherever. And I'm going to put, I'm either going to put the link here, or I'm going to put the link here. Because I know I have a Wolverhampton, and so I probably want to develop uh, manufactured goods in Wolverhampton that I can ship over to Shrewsbury to, you know, start uh, becoming a captain of industry. So, let's see. One way or the other, I'm going to build a canal between these two areas or between these two areas. Uh, let's just go on ahead and lock this in. Um, because now, goods can leave, go to Shrewsbury and to uh, parts beyond, and also coal can be brought in via this canal as well. There's an external coal market and iron market over here. Which is also interesting in its setup in that the markets are not full right from the get-go. There's some empty spots. You can see these little dots that were supposed to leave empty. So you have the option right from the get-go before you do anything else to potentially ship coal off of the board and make some money. But anyway, I'm going to do this. Now, to make a canal, it costs three pounds. So I'm going to spend three of my starting 17. There's a five. Get two and change. And remember, to do the action, I have to play. Oops. And I'm sorry, I don't put the, the money I spent over here. I put the money on my character. All the money I'm going to spend in a given round gets put on my marker because that helps determine player order later on at the end of the round. So anyway, so I've spent, oh, sorry, not two, three. So I spent three to build that canal and, uh, alrighty, and I still have to discard one of these cards, which is going to limit me later. Let's see. Now, the purple cards down here in the southeast, do I plan on building over in that area? Well, I don't want to rule it out, being able to build in Coventry or Nuneaton, but yeah, I might not get over there anytime soon. I might really focus on this area. Uh, and Canuck's not too far away as well. Um, so, I think... But I, I, I think... Uh, no, need, no, let's let's just uh, get rid of that one. So, this is the card I'm playing. I've played this card to do the action. In this case, since I'm basically laying down network connections, it doesn't matter what card I play, I just discard it, it's gone, and I've done my action. My first turn is over. Now, for the rest of the game, every turn, I will be taking two actions every round. Although, at the end of my turn, I fill my hand back up to eight. So, I've got... What did I just get here? I got Birmingham itself. Alrighty. So, that was my turn. It is now Jen's turn. She also started with 17, and she's got her own cards here. And, oh, she's got a pottery card. So, Jen could right off the bat jump into one of the new industries in Birmingham that didn't exist back in Brass. Jen could start making pottery, which is probably the most far-out, funky industry the game has ever seen. Yeah, I think Jen likes that. Yeah. Now... The interesting thing about pottery, well, there's a couple things about pottery. There are very few places to do it. We could do it over here in Coventry, in Stafford, and there's a couple of, oh, way up here in the north in Belper. 
and uh, oh, and, and uh, Stoke on Trent. Trent. And that's it. Those are the only four places. So if there's somebody else trying to do it uh, at the same time you are, those rare spots get gobbled up pretty quick. So Jen could, as her one action, do this right out of the gate, but here's the problem. The first level of pottery is incredibly expensive. It takes 17 pounds, which that's no big deal. We start with 17 pounds, but it also takes one iron. And nobody has actually developed any iron industry on the board. If there was, then Jen could just use the iron industry that's been built. If I, my first thing had been to build an iron factory in Colebrookdale, Jen could use my iron as a means of building here. But since there's no iron in county, Jen is going to have to go out of county and pay two pounds to get some of this stuff imported. And that's a problem, because that means the total of this will be 19 and 7, 17, and Jen doesn't have 19. She starts with 17. So I think her first action right out of the gate is Jen is going to take a loan. Now, like always, whenever you do any of these actions, including loan, you got to discard a card. So Jen is going to dump one of these. Um, let's see. She doesn't want to discard this, because this is the whole point. She wants to um, work on uh, you know, establishing herself as a potter, a potter magnate. And whiskey's nice too. Not whiskey, uh, beer, beer. So she's going to get rid of one of these. Dudley? Does she want to build? Dudley's down here. Birmingham and uh, then Redditch. Man, she wants to keep all those cards. She wants to keep her options open, but she's got to get rid of one to take this loan. And let's see here. I think she will. She'll what the heck? She'll go on ahead and jettison Birmingham. All right. So she is discarding this. And, you know, she can do that knowing that there are more Birmingham cards in the game. Let's see, there's a little reminder right here. Where are you, Birmingham? Yeah, there are um, three. So, Jen does have a chance of finding another one somewhere down the road, maybe. But maybe she just won't build over here at all. So, anyway, so Jen has played that to get a loan. And as it says, when you do a loan, you take... 30 pounds and reduce your income by three levels. And now this is another change from the original brass where you had a choice. You could take 10, 20, or 30 and lower by one, two, three. In Birmingham, it's just a flat 30, no matter what. So Jen is going to reduce her income one, two, three. And that means at the end of this round, um, if nothing changes, Jen is going to owe three pounds because of the debts, because of this loan. Whereas me, I don't make any money at the end of the round, but also I don't lose any. So Jen has lost three levels to get her 30 precious pounds. All right, so now Jen is totally loaded. She is crazy rich. She'll be able to start her pottery concern next round. And then at the end of her turn, she draws back up. You should always have eight until near the end of the round. And so Jen's got a Burton on Trent. Okay, so it is my turn. And now, oh, wait, oh, 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 yeah. And Jen didn't take any, didn't spend any money. So at the end of the round, we have to determine who is going to be first player. Is there a reminder of it here? Yes. So normally we uh, do two actions in turn order and refill our hands as necessary and then determine new player order based on how much money we have spent. Okie doke. So I spent the most money, which means Jen, who spent the least money, becomes the first player going into the second round, which could be important if we were both competing for the same type of thing. But in this case, we're both in our own little world, so it doesn't matter too terribly much. But Jen's going to be first, and we also take income. Uh, me, remember, I don't take any. Jen actually loses three. So, all right, let's just go ahead and break this five. So Jen loses three. She gets two back, but she's still crazy loaded. Don't worry for her. She will make good use of that cash. All right. So uh, round two starts, and now we can start doing double actions every round. One of Jen's actions is she is going to play. She is going to get into the pottery business. And so the first one that she built, like I said before, costs 17 pounds and one iron. So she's going to have to take the iron from the distant market. So she's grabbing that. So that cost two plus 17 equals 19. So here is um, 20. All right, she gets one in change. And she has spent 19. I think there's a pretty good chance that Jen will spend the most money this round, which means I'm going to be first player in third round. I don't think I'm going to be able to beat that. But anyway, so Jen takes this and she could build it on 
any town where the industry would be allowed, provided it is her first industry. If Jen already has begun building a network of industry and rails, whenever you use an industry card, you have to expand that network. But since Jen hasn't started building anything yet, just like I hadn't when I put my rail down, Jen could put this wherever she wants. And I think she does want to put it over here in Stafford because I believe that is the closest one to Shrewsbury, which is the only place we can sell the stuff. Right? Yeah, I mean, Coventry is much further away. Right. So, okay, so Jen's going to go with that. That was her first of two actions. She's played a card, and now she is going to do another action. Um, so, well, you know what? Jen's going to need some more rail. She needs rail here, here, and here to be able to get this pottery down here to Shrewsbury so that she can get her big juicy payday. Her payday, by the way, is 10 victory points and increasing her income by five steps. That is huge. It's a huge investment, but it'll pay off in a big, big way. So I think Jen's second action is she's just going to start uh, building links. Now, uh, I've already built the first. She need, three more need to be built here. But since Jen now, when, when I started, I didn't have anything on the board, so I could have built my first network link anywhere. Jen has to build here to expand her existing network. If she had a building someplace else, she could expand from either of her two networks. So Jen's got to give up a card again. Let's see. Does she care about Burton on Trent? Burton on Trent's way over here. She's going to spend that and three more pounds. One, two, three. Look at all that money she spent to build her first link. All right, so we're coming for you, Shrewsbury. We got the pottery. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, that was Jen's turn, and she now has to refill her hand. She draws two more. And what does she have? She has iron industry and more brewery industry, more beer industry. All right, so that determines what she might be able to do later. It is now my turn. And let's see here. What do I want to do? Well, I, you know, we are industrial barons. Jen wants to get her pottery to market. I don't have anything to get to market yet, so I think I want to get on board too. So if I, in Wolverhampton, start making manufactured goods and make one more link, then I could get my manufactured goods to Shrewsbury. So that makes sense, right? So let's do that. I got two actions. First of all, I think, yes, I do have Wolverhampton. So I'm going to play Wolverhampton to be able to build in the town of Wolverhampton. The interesting thing is, when you play an industry card, you have to expand your existing network if you have one. When you play a city card, you don't have to. You can just build wherever you want because you'll notice, um, since I'm building over here, this isn't part of my network, but that's okay. Since I played the specific town card, I can build. If I played Tamworth, I could build way over here even though it's not connected to anything. So I'm going to build in Wolverhampton and it's going to be my first manufacturing, which costs eight pounds. And you'll notice the fur uh, and one coal. Oh, 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 I'm doing things out of order. I'm doing things out of order. All right, okay, hold on a second. Because uh, I need that coal. I have the eight pounds. I don't have the coal yet. So I've got to do deal with that first. Now, uh, like Jen's situation where there was no iron anywhere on the board, she had to bring it in from the outside markets. Either I build a coal plant and then use my own coal to build my manufacturing hub, because I need that coal, or I bring in coal from the outside world. But to bring coal in, it has to come in via a canal. The interesting thing is coal is big and heavy and difficult to transport. It travels via canals. Iron is not. Iron can basically be pulled around by you know, horse and carriage. So Jen, she was able to get the iron from the outside world, and she just had somebody deliver it right up here to Stafford for her. If I want to get coal over here to Wolverhampton, well, I can bring it in from Shrewsbury. This is a little reminder, as you can see it's over here, that you can bring in outside coal, but it can only make it to Coalbrookdale. I need another line. So my first of two actions is to extend my link. I'm extending this network that I started over here. That's going to cost me three pounds. One, two, three. And I've again got to play a card. Um, let's see. I've got two iron industry. I'll just get rid of one of these. To, and I, again, since I'm doing a line, I can play any card I want. I played that. And so now coal can be brought in from Shrewsbury over here to Wolverhampton. So my second action is, as I talked about before, playing Wolverhampton, uh, which is to specifically do the manufacturing industry, which costs me my eight pounds. All right, so let's break this 10, five. 
one, two, three, four. All right, so this cost me eight pounds to build over there and one coal. There's no coal on the board, so I'm going to pay one more to bring this coal in via Shrewsbury over where it needed to be. And so that cost me one more. I am almost completely broke now, but I have set up industry. Those were my two actions. Okay, I laid some track, or not some track, some, I dug some canal, and I made a manufacturing plant. Okay, so next round, I am going to be ready to actually get dividends out of this. Because right now, it's not doing anything for me. Because while I'm making the manufacturing goods, I haven't sold them yet. That's what I'm going to be up to in round three. But in the meantime, I played two cards, so I draw two. What do I get? Um, right, a Tamworth and a coal industry card. Alrighty, so that's what I've got. And we have finished the second round. So once again, we have to see who paid the most money. That would be Jen with her huge industrial investment. So that means since I was a little bit more frugal, I will be the first player next round. Let's put all these wonderful poker chips back. Okay, there we go. Okay, and we once again get income. And in this case, Jen's not happy. She's going to lose three more pounds. So let's just break one of her tens. Uh, five, six, seven. All right. So, uh, but, you know, this is going to start paying off pretty soon. Uh, you know, it's just all part of that initial investment. And me, I am not making or losing anything. And I want to start making some money because I'm... Broke, broke, broke. All right. So that was the, the second round, and now we are on to the third round. I am back in first, and I would like to sell my wares, which means once again, as I'm going to once again, I'm going to discard one card to sell, which means I will be able to flip my cotton, my manufactured good, or my pottery tile, provided it has a place to go. And since Wolverhampton is connected to Shrewsbury, I've made my investment. We're going to do it. Although first. I gotta get rid of one of these cards. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go on ahead and get rid of Birmingham. I'm totally invested in this West. I, I could care less about building in the Southeast. So let's just say bye bye Birmingham to trigger a sales action, which means I get to sell. Now, in the original brass, you, you, you did what I do. Uh, you flip it over and you, you get the rewards, the dividends, and you say, hooray, that's happy days. But there's an extra step. On most of the goods that you can sell, you have to be able to flip this. You have to be able to provide beer. The rules talk about how historically beer was just about the only clean drinking source. People couldn't trust the water. They did trust the beer. So to get the people to work, I need to provide beer. But that's a problem because nobody has invested in making breweries. But that's okay because as part of setup, when um, we set up the three starting towns, we also put a single beer that is provided as part of making the first delivery. Since I'm the first to make a delivery to Shrewsbury, I get this beer for free. And in fact, not even for free, I get a bonus. I get a bonus, four points, for collecting this beer that I used to make this sale. Alrighty, so that's one, two, three, four points. Hooray, I am on the board. But that's not all. I get three more points. One, two, three. Hooray! And my income goes up five steps. One, two, three, four, five. So now at the end of the round, I am making three bucks instead of just uh, treading water. Nice. Um, and uh, now, if anybody wants to ship anything else to Shrewsbury now, they've got to have beer. And that's a problem for Jen because, as you can see, as a reminder, she's got to have beer here. She doesn't have any beer. The only beer that's there is gone. So Jen cannot ship there until she has beer to ship her stuff. So she can't sell her stuff yet. All right, but we'll worry about that on her turn. My turn is over. Well, no, my turn is over. That was one action. Or was it? Have I done one or two actions? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I only did my first action. I've got one more action. But I don't, I mean, I could take a loan. I'd rather not take a loan. I'm about to get income. So what do I want to do instead? Well, like I said, I could take a loan, and that would pretty much undo uh, the uh, the income I just made off of that. Because uh, I, I got my big jump five. And here's the interesting thing. When your income is climbing, you go up in steps, like what you saw me do. When your income is dropping because you take loans, you don't go in individual steps. You go in grouping. So I would go one, two, three. I'd be all the way back down. Even though I climbed up five, I would jump down. Because you can see, this is a group, this is a group, this is a group. 
So I do not want to take a loan and undo everything I just did. So I should probably do something that doesn't cost any money. But everything costs money. Uh, well, not quite. Uh, there are two things I could do. It doesn't say it here, but I could pass. I could just do nothing and wait for some income to roll in. I could take, I, you know, I could uh, loan. I could sell if it was available, but it's not. I could develop, um, right, which kind of takes money. Development requires iron. And again, I don't have any iron. Nobody's generating any iron, but there is iron we can bring in which would cost two. So I could pay two to develop some of my industries if I was so inclined, but again, then I'd be broke again. So I'm gonna do a totally new action that did not exist before. I am going to scout, which means I play a card to trigger the action. Then, or I discard a card, I should say. Then I discard two more cards. And um, so basically I'm gonna get rid of three cards, but I'm gonna get two of them back. A wild industry and a wild city that lets me build anything I want, anywhere I want. So this is totally new to Birmingham. It did not exist in the original brass. You can have a lot more freedom and flexibility. You don't have to be so constrained if you scout. So I'm gonna scout, which means I gotta get rid of three cards. And I almost don't care which ones I get rid of because I'm going to get these wild cards instead. Um, let's see. I will go on ahead and get rid of the other purple. So this is the card I got rid of to do the scout. Now i got to get rid of two more. What the heck? Let's just get rid of Tamworth and Canuck. Yeah, okay. And that means I get one of each of these. Bip, bop. So that was my second action, and I've got... Tons of flexibility now. Now the interesting thing is I cannot scout again until I've used both of these because you can't take these if you've already got. So you can only at most have two wild cards on hand. But anyway, so that was my turn. I sold and then I scouted and now I got to refill my hand, which means I get two more cards. Um, Warsaw or Walsall and uh, Wolverhampton. Alrighty, and so that was it for me. And I spent no money. I made money. And so hopefully I'll still be able to be first player going to the next round, depending on what Jen does. Because I know Jen's got a lot of cash. And Jen, ugh, she has to put her dreams off even longer. This is murder. Uh, this early investment in pottery is going to be a problem. Because, remember, Jen needs to do two actions. Or three actions, unfortunately. She needs to put a link here. Because then she could get her pottery all the way over to Shrewsbury. Hooray! But she also needs beer, and there's no more beer in Shrewsbury. So, she needs to make a brewery and connect that to her network. Actually, no, she doesn't have to connect the brewery to her network. Uh, beer is weird. Uh, it's uh, very mercurial, the way it works. So, Jen needs to build a brewery, and she needs to connect her pottery to the network. So, those are her two actions. Fortunately, she's still, even though she's hemorrhaging money like crazy, she's uh, still... You know, or her investment's still paying off. So she's going to do two actions. First of all, she is going to, um, right. Oh, but it is three because she needs to connect this line and to build a brewery. She could, well, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So Jen's going to do two things. First of all, she's going to build a brewery. Right. So, uh, she has an industry card, which means she could, uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. No, no. First, okay. She wants to build this brewery down here in Colebrookdale because then that means, um, hey, there, there's a beer available through her brewery that she could use or that I could use as well. And you know, she, you know, I might benefit or she might benefit from me using her beer. So she's going to build it down there, but she can't build here yet because if you use an industry card, you have to expand your existing industry. And the problem is Jen's industry is way up here, um, and she has another restriction. You think, oh, well, she'll just build it here in Stafford. In the first half of the game, when we're in the canal era, these towns are very small, and no one player can make more than one tile, one industry in a given town. I could make a second industry in Stafford, but Jen cannot. So... She has to make her brewery elsewhere, and it has to extend, it has to touch her existing network. She can't do it in Canada because you can't build breweries there, so she could do it here, but that means she would have to take the time to actually make a canal link here so that it's part of her network, then she could make it, which means she's going to spend a whole other turn not shipping stuff. Now, instead, she can put it down here in Colebrook, Dale, um, but first, 
she would have to, this would have to be part of her network, and she's got a problem there too. Even if she, uh, Culbertdale is not in her network because uh, if she puts this line here, this is part, this town's part of her network, this city is part of her network, this city is part of her network, but this is still not considered part of her network because it's connected by my canals and not hers. So I forget, does she have a Culbertdale card? Oh my gosh, she does. So she can still build here. Instead of using the industry card, which means she has to expand her network, she can use the culprit. Because remember, if you use a city card, you can go directly into any city you want, whether it's part of your network or not. So Jen, first action, she could say, I'm going to build in Colebrookdale. And that means she could build a coal plant, an iron plant, or a brewery. And Jen is going to build her first brewery. All right. Although there's a bit of a danger here. There is a bit of a danger here. No, okay, she's pre she, pre she thinks it's safe. Okay, so she's going to build this here. And, alrighty, so it goes into this slot, which means there's one less place that an iron foundry can be made. And over here, it reminds her she needs an iron and she needs five pounds. Since it's still nobody's generating iron yet, Jen's going to have to pay two for this iron she's bringing in from out of country. Uh, so that's two plus five means she, plays, she pays seven. Alright, so she pays seven for this. And um, she has built a brewery, which means she puts one beer. This brewery can generate one shipment worth of beer. So it can be used once. And Jen's planning on using it up here. So that was her first action. Now for her second action, she has to uh, make a connection between Canuck and Wolverhampton. Um, well, okay. <clears throat> Not Strictly speaking, she doesn't. Because... If Jen wants to use her own beer, it can be put on a cart and shipped wherever it wants to go, much like iron. Uh, so it can make it up here to make the shipment. But the problem is, the shipment can't be made because um, Canock doesn't want her uh, pottery. She still has to make the line all the way over here to Shrewsbury. So Jen's second action is she's going to make a line here, which is going to cost her three pounds. So uh, there's the ten. All right. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, all right, there we go. A five, and it cost her three pounds. One, two, three. So Jen has continued, and all of that loan is almost completely gone now. But Jen now has this big industrial arm ready to get this pottery finally sold to the foreign market, or the, you know, the distant market, I should say, in Shrewsbury. So, um, but her turn is over. And right, oh, to do that second action, she did have to pay a card. What the heck? She's got a couple of brewery cards. She'll just get rid of that for her second action. So the one, two, three, four, five, six. She's done her two actions. Now at the end of her turn, she draws two more. And we once again determine Jen obviously paid a lot more money than me. So I was faster and more nimble, which means I will stay first player because Jen was too busy making those big investments. Okay, and we have to deal with our income. Jen loses three more pounds. Oh my gosh, ouch. And me, meanwhile, I gain three because uh, because my investment in manufactured goods that are now being shipped to Shrewsbury is already paying off. Okay, we're on to the next round. And I've achieved what I wanted to do starting out, but I'd like to continue to build and grow. And I'm thinking, you know what, there is now, because we've eaten up so much iron and so much coal from the foreign market, or the, the distant market, there is now a lot of demand for these things. So I'm thinking, maybe it's time for me to start working on fulfilling that demand. I kind of like that. I think, yeah, I am going to build in Colebrookdale. And I have a choice. Because remember, uh, at the, in the first half of the game, each player can only build one thing. So I could either build an iron or a coal factory. And what will happen is, as soon as I build these, um, because Colebrookdale is connected to the external market, the external market, upon building, will immediately buy my coal or my iron from me and give me one or two pounds per. So, hey, since a lot of iron's been gobbled up, let's go on ahead and make an iron foundry. So how much is my first one of these going to cost? It is going to cost me five and one coal. Now, that's a problem. Uh, so, I'm going to have to pay 5 plus 2 to bring coal in from the outside world. But then, I'll have all this iron, which will automatically... Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it anyway. Okay. So, I do have enough money here, right? Or maybe I don't. How much money do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I do not have enough. Ah. Because I need five plus the coal. If Jen at some point would have made coal anywhere along here, I could use her coal for free. But if I bring coal in from somewhere out in the, in the rest of England, it's going to cost me. 
All right, so maybe not iron. Maybe I'll make a coal plant instead because a coal plant costs five and nothing else. So I'm going to spend my last... All right, so I'm doing two actions. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to use this coal industry card, which means I can build coal anywhere in my current networks. So my first action is I'm going to build my first coal plant in my current network, which means I could build it here or here because both of these towns are in my network because they're all connected. Let's see here. I already have a Wolverhampton card, so if I wanted to build more in Wolverhampton, I've got that. Although, actually, no, wait, no, I can't. Because remember, I've already built in Wolverhampton. I cannot build a second time here. Jen can, but I can't. So I'm just going to build over here in Colebrookdale. And I, pay, I paid my card for it. I'm going to pay my five pounds for it. As you can see, five pounds. And um, so it has two coal that is being generated by this factory. And now normally, that would be the end of the round, except for the fact that the distant market wants coal. And you know, the instant you buy, if the distant market, um, and that's represented by Shrewsbury or Oxford or uh, a Gloucester or Warrington or Nottingham, if any of them are connected to where I've just made my first coal plant, they immediately say, coal please, and they end up taking it. So this two coal I just generated, which could go towards the development of other buildings around here, is going to automatically be sucked up into Shrewsbury to fill up this distant market, and I make two pounds off of that. All right, so I got two pounds for that, all right? Which means this only cost me three pounds instead of five to build. But now something else happened. As soon as one of your manufacturing plants for coal or iron all or, or beer, as soon as all the stuff that that uh, plant generates has been lifted, you automatically flip it, which means I just got another point. Hooray! And I have increased my income by four. One, two, three, four. Now I'm making five bucks at the end of every round. And you know, basically, yeah, you have to bear in mind what this income value represents is an ongoing contract. Basically, there was a, a distant market that wanted coal. My coal plant could generate up to two coal. The distant market said, we want a permanent contract with you for all the coal this plant will ever generate. All its capacity is going to be gobbled up by us in the future. So um, they paid that two up front to get it. And now, once I flip this, the, I am going to continue to get income off of this thing for the rest of the game. Uh, plus that one point I got. So that was it. It's going to be paying off for the rest of the game. And here's another thing. I haven't talked about this yet, but you'll notice. Now that I flipped it, there are these little links. These The more links there are that these um, canals, or later on, rail links are connected to, the more points my canals are worth. This canal is connected to one, two, three, four links. This canal is worth four points to me. This canal I built is connected to one, two, three, four links. So it is also worth four points. Remember how I said right up front, I wanted to get my canals on the board ASAP because I figured they would be, this, these are going to be valuable areas. They're valuable areas because of all this industry that's building up. So that's going to pay off for me at the end of the era when I collect points based on the canals I've built. All right, so that, I think that was my first action. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, I've got one more action I can do. Woohoo! And I just made two pounds. Is there something I want to do for two pounds? I can't do much for two pounds. I, I, I can't even develop now because now iron costs three. So it might be to the point, folks, where I need to take a loan. Now, I don't have to because I'm, I'm now starting to make five pounds every round automatically. Um, so I could just pass. Uh, because with two pounds, well, I can't build anything anymore. I, I would need another pound to expand my network, so I can't do that. Oh, excuse me. Um, and development would cost iron, since there's no iron on the board. If I could have made iron, but I just couldn't quite afford the iron. Am I going to take a loan? Am I going to sell? Am I going to scout? Now, loans, I mean, I can afford to take a loan now because, well, remember, it'll be painful. I won't just drop down one, two, three spaces and go from earning five to earning three. I will jump three groups, one, two, three. So I'll go from earning five to only earning two. I do not want to take a loan. And I can't scout because I've already scouted, so I can't get any more. So, but the only other thing I can do if I don't want to take a loan right now is pass and do nothing, although I still have to spend a card to pass. I think I'm going to do that. I can't build anything more in Wolverhampton anyway. I'm just going to pass and say goodbye to this. And those are the two cards I played. And so, so I got Stafford and a uh, another beer industry card. So that was that because I just don't want to lose all this income I'm making. So that was it for me. It is now Jen's turn. She gets to do two actions. And 
finally, folks. Oh my gosh, this has been so painful. It's taken her forever. She is going to finally sell her goods. Her beer is still here. And see, I was worried. She was worried putting this single beer out. If I could have, say, um, you know, gotten a line and a cotton mill down here in Kidminster, I could have consumed Jen's beer to ship my cotton to Shrewsbury. And then Jen still wouldn't have the beer. She needs to ship her pottery. But Jen could tell I couldn't do it because it would have taken me three actions. One to build the line, one to build the cotton mill, and then one to sell. So Jen knew, putting that beer down, that she was going to be safe. It was going to pay off for her. So now let's go on ahead and have her sell. So she has to spend a card. It could be any of these cards. And again, she's got to decide, all right, so she'll get rid of another Burton on Trent, because that's further away. Burton on Trent Lee is closer to Nottingham. Nottingham is, is effectively offline for us this game. So Jen's just going to spend that card to trigger a sale. And <clears throat> that means, as a reminder here, she needs one beer. So she will spend this beer to trigger this sale over here to Shrewsbury. She flips it. And Jen has increased her income by five. One, two, three, four, five. She's making one buck a turn. Hooray. But more importantly, Jen just scored 10 points. So, one, two, three, four, you know, boom. Just like that, Jen has pulled into the lead on points. She's making a little bit of cash. Um, and she hasn't made many points. Her canal up here is only worth one point because of one connection. This canal she's made is worth two points. So Jen definitely wants to build something in Canock because it will increase the value of both of her canals. Um, you know, so she could start making manufactured goods. But again, unless she can generate more beer. Oh, wait, wait, no, there's one more thing. Speaking of beer, so Jen's flipped this. This brewery it is now has a contract with this pottery manufacturer to continue providing beer to, so this thing can continue shipping. This ongoing income of five means from now on, all this pottery is being shipped over here to Shrewsbury and beyond. Um, this thing, because it's empty, has flipped also, which has given Jen four more points. One, two, three, four. And four more income. One, two, three, four. So Jen is now making three a turn versus my five. Although, by flipping this beer, it's two more links that have increased the value of my of my um, canals, not hers. So I, Jen just gave me four points by putting that, by flipping that brewery there. Although she got four points herself and four income. All right. And so now, if Jen wants to come over here to, to Kennock and make some uh, manufactured goods, or she could do it here in Wolverhampton as well, because uh, I built, and so um, you know, so that she can, but she'd do it here because that would increase both of her canals, and she wouldn't want to build here because that would increase my canal. So she builds over here. Hey, she could start shipping uh, materials off, but she needs more beer because there's no beer available. But Jen could. Um, expand her network to reach this space and then build a brewery over there. And her second brewery, well, her second brewery would still would be another one of these. It just produces one beer. So Jen could do that, but that would take one, two, three, four actions uh, over several, plus a loan, I think, because she's getting low on cash. So five actions total to be able to get this brewery here, get manufactured goods here, get it connected, and then get all that sold with a loan along the way, because then this would, again, increase her outcome. And so, I mean, you know, we're only halfway through the canal era, folks. But, um, you know, Jen's still got a lot of options. She's going for this long-term thing of, you know, really, um, you know, because you can see the huge um, return on pottery in terms of points. Not in terms of uh, money so much. She's making five, whereas um, you know mine was five, but I only got three points off of manufactured goods. So uh, that's that. And now that Jen has done her first level pottery, later on she could do her second level, which is interesting. This is the crazy thing about pottery. Unlike most of the other industries that just get more expensive but more lucrative as they go up, pottery is a real bust and boom. The first one costs 17 and an iron to build, but it gives you 10 points and five income. The second one is super cheap to build. Just needs one coal, no money. But it only increases your income and your points by one. Then the third one is insane. It costs 22 bucks and two coal but it gives you 11 points and increases. So they're worth a huge amount of points, but only every other one. The, the fifth one tw um, costs 24 pounds and gives you 20 points. So, but the thing is, you have to go through these interim ones. And remember, there are only four places to do pottery in the entire board, and here's five things. So how could you ever do the biggest one anyway? Well, this is the only thing I haven't talked about, is developing. On your turn, if you spend one or two iron, you can eliminate the next step 
or two steps of any one of your little tracks here. So now that Jen has gotten rid of the first pottery, she could develop to completely skip this second one, which means she goes on to the third, which is going to cost 22, but she could get that built. Now there's an interesting thing about pottery as well. Every other pottery, the really expensive ones, cannot be skipped because you can see they've got that little no development. So Jen could skip this one to get to that one. And you know, because this one, it doesn't cost anything, but it, it, other than just waste time. So she could develop past that. But it's not just pottery. You could develop past anything. Jen has done one brewery. If she develops past this brewery the next time she makes a brewery it'll be a level two um, which will increase the income by an extra buck she gets out of it and you know the sooner she builds level twos the sooner she is to level threes and level fours so development is something you can do if you have access to iron and in this crazy game nobody has made any iron yet I wanted to and Jen might still where would Jen build iron um, well, she can't build here in Calbertail because she's already done that. And she can't do iron here. She could do coal or she could do manufactured goods. Uh, she could come down here to, to Wausau and do some iron there. And then, you know, uh, and, and the interesting thing is, does Jen, and Jen did have Wausau, didn't she? No, she has Dudley. Yeah, so she just has Dudley. But uh, Dudley, uh, Dudley, Dudley, and uh, uh, Worcester. Worcester and let's see. So Dudley, because um, she could build down here in Dudley and start generating iron. That could fulfill the needs she needs for other stuff, or fulfill the stuff I do. Um, and interestingly, as soon as she builds and as soon as anybody builds iron, the foreign market is going to grab all that. So the first iron that anybody makes is effectively going to be free. With that in mind, does Jen want to do that? Uh, the first iron needs one coal and five, but that's the problem. She can't build down here because there's no coal down here. There's no lines connecting coal. I mean, nobody's generating any coal yet. The only coal that's been generated so far, ha I mean, this guy is all contracted up. So, Jen would have to, you know, if Jen made a line to Dudley and then built her iron, she could bring coal from out of network into here to make her iron, and then the iron would immediately get gobbled up here, which uh, means she would immediately get to flip this and increase her income by three and get three more points. So maybe that's the next thing she wants to do. But to do it, she needs coal, and there's no coal anywhere on the board. The only coal that's ever existed, I have run on ahead, and it's been spoken for. So... What is Jen going to do next? Hard to say, but you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the flow of brass. There is so much going on in this game. It is so big and so heavy. Now, I'm only about halfway through the canal era. If you're kind of bummed, you're like, oh, I want to see the rest of the canal era, you can go on ahead and hit that eye in the top right corner screen and go watch my original run through of the original brass uh, because the overall flow of the game is pretty much the same. In the original brass, there was no pottery, there was no manufactured goods, there was no beer. But uh, you still played a card to do an action. You still had to deal with all these kind of economic decisions. So if you want to see how an entire age goes, you can go watch that run through. Or instead, you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.